so uh, hello there it's everything man 95 again and um, today is uh, just going to be a little video on how to set up a home lab or uh, or something similar uh, this can be for chemistry mechanics electronics everything all together whatever you want um, what I just have a bunch of uh, things here and down in my lab um, and uh, hopefully this helps you figure out what you want to do and uh, okay I'll start with um, equipment um, chemistry wise you can get a bunch of different things um, little dropper whatever the heck these are syringes uh, different beakers mine are in plastic uh, glass is expensive but glass is also better it withstands a lot more different things chemicals heat well, chemical-wise, plastic can be good too, but I like glass anyway. Uh, these are Erlenmeyer flasks. There's a 500 milliliter, 125, and a 250 milliliter. Um, those are very helpful. Um, flasks and beakers. Uh, instead of using, like, say, a coffee pot, a jar, things like that for real basic home chemistry it's uh, good to get things like this you can just get kits online whatever just a few things um, and the special thing that these uh, pieces of glassware are made out of is uh, borosilicate glass and uh, instead of just normal glass it uh, it withstands heat much better um, and so these are very useful especially if you're using a hot plate hot plates and stirrers and things like that. Um, also you want to make sure that your area is well lit. I have this kind of folding whatever the, whatever it is, folding swinging lamp. I have a little lamp up there, bigger light and just a uh, small desk lamp. Um, and I am down in a basement which is not the best conditions. This is just the only real open space. Um, it's not good because it's damp. Um, although there is enough space to store things. Like that's an old uh, piece off of a microwave, a piece of stainless steel just for future experiments. Um, yeah, I try to keep a... Wo um, it's, it's the workplace here, try to keep it somewhat clean and open just so when you do do something you don't have to keep pushing things off to the side. I'll give you an example over here. This is my uh, brother's lab area. As you can see it kind of has an even coating of stuff just all over. Um, uh, there's flasks, beakers, cylinders. I have a separatory funnel. Those are useful. Barrettes Barrettes and separatory funnels are uh, very good. So this is just, uh, what is it, 250 milliliters. Again, it's Pyrex. I got it just at a uh, at a flea market for 10 bucks. Um, so that was a good find. And it's made with uh, kind of roughened glass here and on the inside of the neck. So it uh, makes a somewhat good seal. Um, and then you have a little tap down here and it just drips off into a beaker, flask, whatever. Um, and there's plenty of different sizes of all these things too. You can go down, I think you can go down all the way to like 50 milliliters, a little tiny Erlenmeyer flask. Same with beakers. You can get very tiny little beakers. Um, next I'll go on to uh, chemicals and things like that and where to find them. And now going on to uh, chemicals um, you can just find, uh, it's really easy to find uh, things at home like um, sometimes you have muriatic acid which is used to clean cement that is uh, pretty much that's hydrochloric acid um, so you can use that for different things and when you do store it uh, either store it in its uh, original bottle or um, yeah yeah I recommend plastic or in its original bottle um, you can get things like uh, baking soda, sodium hydrogen carbonate is just its fancy name pretty much. Uh, sodium tetraborate, this little one here is uh, just borax. 
um, manganese dioxide is uh, is the black stuff in batteries so if you take apart batteries you can get that and uh, I'll show you reactions later you can do with it just fun little things you can get uh, charcoal which is pretty much uh, it's one form of carbon it's not the best because it's pretty it's not too pure but you can use it in uh, I don't know just a couple different experiments um, hydrogen peroxide that's very useful uh, you can you can refine it into a higher percentage and then you can uh, you can react it with manganese and uh, the manganese acts as a catalyst and breaks down the hydrogen peroxide and uh, makes a bunch of steam it's, it's a neat little thing to do um, you can get some potassium chloride which is a substitute for salt um, mineral oil is something very useful for uh, for storing things and it prevents oxygen from getting to them um, a lot of different things you can just find around home different uh, tools like there's an adjustable wrench this is a spark cap that's a neat experiment that's a Jacob's ladder another neat experiment that's a wall of tools different uh, prongs clamps test tube holders little scoops and tweezers as well um, what's important what's very important with uh, home labs and things like that is safety these are just some normal gloves just some uh, I don't know they're work gloves pretty much uh, you can get the latex gloves the rubber gloves those are useful for uh, chemistry very useful to protect your hands um, fire extinguishers are always good just to have around just in case um, for doing experiments with uh, acids and bases and such you should keep the opposite around so in case a spill happens so you spill some sort of acid keep um, baking soda nearby and you can uh, throw it on there and it'll neutralize and reduce the harmful effects um, electronics wise this is a variac these are very very useful they're uh, variable transformers and there's just a little switch you turn it on and then you have an adjustable voltage up here mine goes from 0 to 140 some go from 0 to 200 and and more and you just plug in the output right here um, this is a hydrogen oxygen separator you run a current through and it produces gas from uh, from water this is a a uh, magnetron from a scrapped microwave so uh, it's just a neat looking thing I'd never use it without the proper safety uh, equipment and this is a microwave transformer we'll get into that later um, also very useful to have is charts this is uh, polyatomic ions their values and everything the activity series or the reactivity series whatever that's a periodic table that you need you need to have one of those um, little coffee grinder this is uh, good to have as well a stand for soldering iron um, and then an assortment of tubes and wires just spare things just so I can put them out of the way different equipment all very useful now what I'm going to do here is uh, a neat fun little experiment I plan on making uh, another video on some uh, simple little uh, home experiments you can do. And so this is hydrogen peroxide, which is very roughly 20 to 30 percent. I uh, refined it myself just to give it a little bit more powder, power than uh, the normal stuff that you buy. So I have some in this uh, little pipette thing. And I'm just going to spray it into this little vial that's filled with uh, manganese there so it makes a little cloud thing and it kinda shoots some of the manganese um, but what that does is the manganese very quickly uh, makes the uh, hydrogen peroxide decompose and um, it kinda shoots everywhere makes some uh, oxygen and steam I don't know uh, so that's a uh, pretty popular class experiment done in uh, in uh, school chemistry and such. Um, 
I'll, uh, I'll set up a little electronics experiment too. Now I have uh, moved over to the other table. Um, I've had to push the things out of the way so I can work with this. But uh, this is another microwave oven transformer. It says right on it, danger, high voltage. My other one is uh, right over there in the middle of the table. The big thing there. And these are heavy too. These are like uh, steel coated copper wire pretty much is what they are. And what they do is uh, pump the 110, 120 about wall volts up to roughly one or two kilovolts depending. Um, and what you can do with that is you can make uh, arcs, electric arcs. And so this is the Jacob's Ladder that I've made and uh, one end's hooked into uh, one part of the uh, secondary, or no, it's hooked into the frame and the other one is hooked into the secondary here and it's attached to the screwdriver so I can uh, I can strike an arc right here. Here we go. So right when it goes on, I don't know if it'll show up on video, but you can hear a little buzz noise. And uh, just touch it and strike the arc. Now what you saw right there was uh, an arc that rised in this Y section here because of the heat of it and it just raised up until it broke. Um, and this is, it's very dangerous if you uh, if you just go and take a transformer, plug it in, throw it on a couple wires, you can really mess yourself up. Um, I'm not responsible if you screw up with anything like that. But um, that's another very fun experiment, experiment if you like uh, electronics or just tinkering with things in general and so I'll uh, go back over here to my table and uh, that's the video um, if you like this uh, like comment subscribe whatever you want uh, check out my other videos too they might interest you and I hope to soon throw some videos of uh, different experiments like I just showed you on the uh, internet as well. So uh, have a nice day.